All right, we're going to get started. Welcome, everyone, and good evening uh, for this presentation. Welcome to the presentation on resources that are produced by GBH and drawn from the PBS Kids program, Molly of Denali. I'm Carolyn Jacobs. I'm in the GBH Education Department, and also on the line is Angelica uh, Quintanilla from GBH Education, and she will be active in the chat posting links as we go along and keeping us on track with questions and comments. You are welcome to post your questions and comments in the chat. And um, just a note that sometimes your default is for um, just, the present, just the presenters or the panelists. And we'd like, of course, everyone to see your comments. So feel free to change that to everyone, okay? Uh, we imagine that after tonight's session, you're going to be inspired to preview and use with your students many of the resources that you see. And you are invited to come back online on October 13th. The registration link is there, that will be in the chat. And uh, after you've had a chance to process what you've learned and um, internalize it, maybe talk with your colleagues, come back online and we'll have an open conversation, not a formal presentation, but an open conversation with presenters and then colleagues who are online. That's called a peer exchange. Tonight we are sponsored by GBH. Education, GBH is Boston's public television, television station and the producer of many of the iconic programs that you see on public stations across the country. Uh, for example, Nova, Masterpiece, American Experience, Frontline, and lots of programs from kids, for kids, all start at uh, GBH. We are also sponsored by Vermont PBS. And we have online Heather Duhamel, and she would like to say a few words of welcome for you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this evening. Um, and I am thrilled to be here with our partners um, from GBH and also from the Vermont Agency of Education. Um, and you get to meet them further down the line. Um, and we're thrilled to check back with you um, later in the um, in October um, to have a bigger conversation. And um, you will be so lucky to meet um, Janet, our Vermont educator here, um, along with all these educators um, in this forum tonight to learn more about how to integrate this great program into your classroom. I'm glad you're here. Thanks, Heather. We're also sponsored by PBS Learning Media. If you're not already, already familiar with PBS Learning Media, please check it out, sign up. It's free, of course. On the site, you will find thousands of resources for pre-K to 12 across all subjects. Resources like short video clips, lesson plans, interactives, PDFs, documents, etc. So PBS Learning Media, and this is where you will find many of the resources that you're going to see this evening. All right, our wonderful presenters. I am very pleased to introduce them and have them work working with us. We've had a good time putting this uh, presentation together. Both Emily and Lori are from the Vermont Agency of Education, which is the name for the Vermont Board of Ed for the state both parents of young children who are fans of PBS programming. Emily is a former high school English teacher and drama teacher. She's currently the ELA coordinator as part of the proficiency-based learning team at the Vermont Agency of Education. Lori is uh, the continuous improvement coach at the agency and also a former teacher and a former instructional coach and a former ELA coordinator at the agency. And Lori has just completed her doctorate in educational leadership and policies. Congratulations, Lori. Janet is a celebrated Vermont educator named Vermont's 2002 Teacher of the Year and the 2004 American Star of Teaching by the US Department of Education. Since retiring after 30 years of teaching pre-K to one grades, Janet has been an early childhood teacher educator. And on a personal note, 
Along with her husband, Janet raises Highland cattle for breeding stock and beef. She, had, she has around 100 animals and has the oldest registered fold of Highland cattle in the US since 1967. Michelle Maloney has been teaching in Worcester Public Schools for the last 18 years, mostly fourth grade. This year, she's transitioning into a new role as a focused instructional coach at Worcester Arts Magnet School. Michelle has advised GBH education on the development of the Molly of Denali resources on PBS Learning Media. Everything that we produce at GBH and publish on PBS Learning Media is, um, has teachers' hands on it. Uh, teachers advise us along the way. And Michelle is also serving as a current GBH Educator Ambassador. And if you have an interest in learning more what that is, um, Angelica, I'm sure will post the URL for that in the chat. And uh, you can also, you're also welcome to email me. Also on the line, but not pictured, is Nikki Siriani, who's in the Education Department also. And she is all about Molly of Denali. She leads the efforts to really get Molly of Denali resources into your hands and the hands of teachers across the country. So the plan is that uh, we have about an hour presentation and uh, Nikki is going to come on very on first and talk about the Molly of Denali program and the project and the collection. And then we will shift to the Vermont Education Agency, Lori and Emily. Um, they and the Vermont PBS have established a partnership. They work very closely together and they've done some very fine work with Molly of Denali to help Vermont educators, especially through the pandemic. And they generously are sharing all of their work. Janet will uh, go into a little detail about one of the Molly Denali lesson plans and then uh, Michelle will come on and talk about the Molly of Denali podcast for which she was a advisor. And I'll come back on for a few final remarks. So just to orient us, um, the Molly of Denali resources that are on PBS Learning Media are part of what we call a collection. And a collection is a group of resources that um, are all organized around a theme or a program. So there's one URL, you go to one page and then you can search and find many resources on that one page. So I'm gonna turn things over to Nikki. Hi, Carolyn, thank you so much. Um, and hello to everyone on this call. I'm so excited to be here with you this evening. Um, as Carolyn said, I am all about Molly. So I'd love to give you all um, some background about Molly and some information just to get you grounded in the series. Um, so Molly of Denali is a PBS kids series that follows the adventures of curious and resourceful 10 year old Molly Mabray, an Alaska native girl who lives in the fictional village of Kaya, Alaska. And the series details um, her adventures Adventures exploring her town um, with her best friends, Tui and Trini, and her dog, Suki, um, solving problems um, all throughout her, her wonderful community. Um, Molly of Denali is not only a series on PBS Kids, but it is also a podcast, which you'll hear more about later. Um, and there are also our web games and other sorts of interactive materials like handouts um, to help kids bring a little bit of Molly into their into their lives. So um, next slide, I have a clip from our opening sequence. So you can get a feel for what Molly is like. Hey everyone, it's me, Molly. Molly of the Nolly. Let's go. She's Molly of the Nolly. <laughs> By plane, a sled, or snowshoe, she is ready to explore. From Cactoba down to Juno, always wanting to learn more. Together with her best friend, to be always by her side. And Trini! Discovering the outdoors on adventures day and night. Come along with Wally. Wally. Through fields of fire, we come along with Wally. Wally. From tundra to the sea. Must be Joe. Let's go! Wally up the night.
Great. Hey everyone, it's me, Molly. Oh, one more. Perfect. Um, so just like all of our shows uh, we create here at GBH for Children's, um, Molly of Denali is grounded in a specific curriculum focus. And Molly kind of falls uh, into two curriculum buckets. The first one is our informational text curriculum. Um, we are the first children's series to feature this kind of curriculum in a show. So each episode of Molly of Denali will show Molly and her friends and family using informational pieces of text like uh, maps, recipes, directions, um, indexes uh, to help them solve problems or go on adventures around their community. Um, to give you an example of what some of these or what this might look like in some of the episodes, in the first two photos on the top, you'll see Molly was trying to find a hot springs her grandpa Nat found during one very cold winter and he created a series of directions which she followed to go find this hot springs out uh, in Alaska. The second series of photos um, is an example from an episode called First Fish where Molly uh, is really anxious to catch her first salmon. She's really excited um, but she's have, having trouble finding salmon. Um, so she researches the salmon life cycle and creates a diagram which helps her kind of plan uh, for where she will best be able to catch her first fish. Um, and the last example I have is Molly and her friends really want to race canoes and they are petitioning a local uh, canoe coach to have them uh, help them. And she says, no, you need to do a little bit more research and learn more about canoeing before I help you. So they go to the library and research more about canoeing. So those are just some of the examples of what uh, the informational text curriculum actually looks like in each episode. Uh, next slide. Our other main curriculum focus is focusing on Alaska Native culture and values. Um, Molly Vignoli is the first nationally distributed children's series to feature a Native American leave character, and a huge goal and guiding principle of the series is to provide children um, with a positive modern representation of Indigenous peoples. Um, and a huge part of this is the fact that we are strive to have representation both on screen but also behind the screen as well, um, and it really wouldn't be possible without us, including Alaska Native um, collaborators and contributors on all elements of the series, ranging from voice talent to production teams to script writers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it really helps with capturing that accurate uh, portrayal of contemporary life of these communities. Um, so to give you a peek of what that kind of looks like in a clip, um, here is a series of clips kind of uh, squished together from our episode Grandpa's Drum, which shows Molly investigating a photo of her grandfather from when he was little to figure out why he no longer plays his drum. Um, so she's both using her informational text skills, um, but also uh, it is teaching about a very important aspect of Alaska Native culture. Okay, let's see what you got. <laughs> it's a picture of you. Hmm. At least I think it's you. You're singing with a little girl. Oh, that's me, all right. <laughs> From a long time ago. How come I've never heard you sing? <gasps> you should sing with us at the show tonight. <sighs> oh, sorry, Sagoya. I don't sing anymore. But how can you not sing? Everybody sing! Ho, ho! I don't sing anymore because... I don't have my drum. I gave it away and poof! All the songs I knew went with it. I cannot sing a note. Where is it? Your drum? I left it with her. I wonder if she kept it. Aw, look how cute Dad was. Hmm, the girl I don't know. She's probably someone Grandpa met when he was sent away to school. Sent away? Yes. Back then, people like us, Native kids, were sent off to boarding school. Had to leave their family, their friends, their homes. It was a hard time for Grandpa. That's why you never hear him talk about it. It makes him too sad. Hey! There you are! You ready to sing? Ready! And... Maybe you will be too, because... Oh... Molly... Tui and I found your friend in the picture, and brought back your drum. Do you have your songs again? <sighs> oh, 
I left them so far behind. They'll need to find their way back to me. That's okay, Chada. I'm just glad we could find it for you. Molly, we're next! I saw someone in the chat said that that episode makes them cry. It makes me cry too. And I've seen it quite a few times and I still tear up. Um, but as you can see, uh, the episodes really do weave together, uh, both using informational text, but also um, stories uh, that are really important to Alaska Native communities um, and telling those stories in really age appropriate ways uh, for kids to understand um, some of the lived experiences of Alaska Native communities. So next slide. Um, so uh, the PBS Learning Media Collection uh, on Molly of Dada'ali consists of lesson plans, um, interactives, video resources, and more that use either clips from the series or other elements that we've developed uh, to accompany the series like web games. Um, and we've uh, created educational supports to help uh, educators use them in the classroom um, and use them as teaching tips for both teaching informational text, but also Alaska Native culture and values. Next slide. So here are what some of our informational text resources look like, and I definitely encourage everyone to get onto that collection and explore it further. Um, but here, uh, there was an episode about uh, Molly following Grandpa Nat's recipe for ice cream or navagi. Um, so it'll have a clip and then just uh, teaching supports for teaching the informational text uh, uh, elements to that episode and helping your students uh, understand the informational text that Molly is using and how she is using it. Um, we also have uh, printables and handouts to help your students explore or learn more about informational text, um, like this one that's the different types of different informational text. Um, we also have a handout that details our 15 learning goals for the series um, to help you understand as an educator um, what we want students to take away when they watch episodes of Molly, whether it be creating informational text, evaluating informational text, um, using informational text in their daily life. Um, and here's another handout that accompanies a lesson plan, teaching kids about how to do research and organizing data um, or sources, different sources as they investigate um, whatever project they might be investigating. So next slide, please. And then here are what some of our Alaska Native culture uh, and values resources look like on PBS Learning Media. Um, we have a whole uh, resource for Grandpa's Drum specifically, but we also have this resource, which is about the making of Grandpa's Drum. And it's a little bit of behind the scenes about the real life it's, uh, uh, elder whose story inspired the episode um, to help facilitate discussions about that episode in your classroom. Um, we also have handouts on Alaska Native culture um, and a viewing guide for Grandpa's Drum, which also offers more resources um, for, for having your students kind of engage with the materials and continue to explore or understand more about, about some of the topics raised in the episode. Um, and then we also have this handout here, which highlights some of the Alaska Native values. There are many um, that a lot of the show episodes are based around, um, whether that be showing respect for elders or taking care of others or um, sharing what you have. Um, all of those are really woven into each episode. Um, and we've heard educators using those as community guidelines for their classroom or using them in other creative ways in the classroom as well. 
So I think that is a very quick and brief overview, but we will make sure to give you all links to all of these resources after this webinar so you can check them out and explore them on your own. And now I'm going to turn it over to Emily and Lori to take it away. Thanks, Nikki. You can go ahead and advance the slide, Carolyn. Many rural communities in Vermont have limited internet access, making remote learning that much more challenging. In April of 2020, the Vermont Agency of Education and Vermont PBS formed a partnership in order to provide free high quality educational resources to support remote learning for Vermont students during school closures due to the pandemic. Our goal was to ease the burden of remote learning for teachers and caregivers by providing standards aligned educational materials created and curated by specialists at Vermont PBS and the Vermont Agency of Education. Our partnership ensured availability of hands-on non-digital lessons and online learning to all Vermont learners, regardless of connectivity. We continue to partner to support Vermont educators and families. Next slide, please. So these are a few examples of what we have provided so far. We began our partnership with weekly schedules of broadcast programming, which we linked to the accompanying PBS learning media collections like Nikki was showing you um, for Molly. And then content specialists such as Lori and myself at the Agency of Education curated and created resources to supplement these collections. We also created incorporating PBS documents which show connections between specific PBS programs and Vermont state and national standards. We produced webinars to walk educators and caregivers through PBS learning media and PBS kids resources. Based on feedback from the field, we shifted to monthly overviews of resources for in-classroom and distance learning using analog, digital, and broadcast resources bundled thematically. Recently, we've been developing and delivering hands-on literacy and STEM kits to local after-school programs and libraries in order to support continued learning at home. And now Lori is going to walk you through a specific set of resources that she helped curate and create. Go ahead, Lori. Thanks, Emily. Good evening, everyone. Um, and you know, even if you're not a Vermont educator, uh, we would love for you to visit our site and explore some of the resources that we'll show you or talk about with you tonight and some of the ones Emily just described. And I believe the link is in the, the notes section. So maybe we could post that in the chat. Uh, but please feel free to come and peruse the resources that we've curated over the past year, year and a half during COVID. And next slide, please. And so I, during this kind of collaborative partnership, I was responsible for designing and curating some resources related to the Molly of Denali program, which was a lot of fun and a bonding experience between me and my uh, then six-year-old who absolutely loved the program, still loves the program. I'm sure he's hearing it and wondering what's she doing in there and she's watching Molly without me. Mm -hmm. uh, but the two resources that I wanted to talk to you tonight about um, are the incorporating um, Molly document and the episode specific resources. And if you just click again, I think uh, those will be highlighted there. So. And then the next slide, I'll go into depth about these. And so these were created for um, not just Molly of Denali, but um, other programs too. So if you do visit our website, you'll be able to um, access all of those. Next slide, please. Oh, uh, one back. Thank you. So this is the incorporating Vermont PBS into your classroom document that we created, several of those. This one is specific to Molly of Denali. And what these entail are basically a, a brief description of the program and ways to watch the program. You'll see an audience, and this one is, we've labeled it K to three, but it really could be pre-K through, through third grade as well. Um, a brief description. And then what we tried to do was to incorporate those common core standards, or in our case, our Vermont Early Learning Standards, which are directly connected um, to the Common Core Standards, especially as they relate to the informational text that Nikki um, so wonderfully highlighted um, earlier. And what I love about Molly is she's so curious and she and her friends are problem solvers and always exploring. And so it just made it very easy to kind of create these resources and activities, follow-up activities for everyone to, to use. Next slide, please. And then the second part of this incorporating document contains um, 
some other resources, both for educators and families, and those episode specific resources, as well as making connections to other programs that um, viewers might like if they are enjoying the Molly Tadali program. Next slide, please. And the second document I wanted to highlight is the document related to the episode specific resources. So what I did for, um, in general, I created a set of general comprehension questions that could be used during any program for viewing either with teachers and their students or with parents and families at home uh, as you watch the program. And then I took each of the Molly of Denali episodes and created episode specific discussion questions. And in addition to that, I created some um, fun interactive follow-up activities that have kids doing research or exploring that informational text, reading and writing their own informational text, um, art activities, science projects, things of that nature that direct, um, directly relate to the topics that were explored in the episodes. Next slide, please. And finally, before Janet dives in and, and explains to you how these resources are used in the classroom, and I know she's gonna talk about this episode, Brand New Flag, I just wanted to zoom in on what those discussion questions look like. So there are a series of before, during, and after viewing discussion questions. And like I said, these can be used at home or in the classroom. And then there's the collection of, in this case, for this episode, there were some arts and social studies connection activities that you can engage with after the program. And now I think I will hand it off to Janet, who's going to talk a little bit about how you can use these and other PBS resources in your classroom. Good evening. My name is Janet Stewart. I live in beautiful Vermont, where the foliage is just beginning to put on its bonanza of color, and our cattle are growing their long hair in preparation for winter. I'm honored to have been asked to participate in this professional development opportunity focusing on Molly of Denali. After 30 years in the classroom, I know how busy teachers are, particularly at this time of year and especially with the challenges you faced during the pandemic. I'm humbled by your dedication to the craft and to your students and for taking time away from possibly family or relaxation in the evening uh, to enrich your teaching of indigenous cultures and science and social studies. Teaching never gets easier and educators deserve all the help that they can get. Enter PBS and Molly of Denali to the rescue. Each Molly episode blends educational goals involving edu informational text, Alaskan native values, social skills, and content knowledge in science and social studies, all shared by adorable 10-year-old Molly, her family, her friends, and her dog, Suki. Although the short videos are a joy for students and teachers to watch, what makes this series so special for educators are the easy to access content filled lesson plans. The lesson plans are rooted in research and best practice. They're suitable for a variety of age levels, for a variety of instruction, whole class, small group, independent work, and they're respectful of teachers and the effort that you put into trying to present good content to your students. Before we go any further, I'm going to ask you to please have one sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, a blank side of a printed page or any kind of loose leaf lined paper and something to write with. We'll get back to that paper later on in the program. All the Molly stories are wonderful, both as educational entertainment and classroom instruction. I chose Brand New Flag to focus on today. In this feature, Molly's class has been studying about the Alaskan flag and the origin of the symbols. Molly decides she wants to create a flag for her parents' trading post. She sets up a contest for her friends to submit a flag. As the entries come in, Molly loves all of them and she worries about hurting her friend's feeling. I won't share it, but the ending is a wonderful surprise. Not only does this story address the universal challenge of children 
not wanting to hurt their friend's feelings. But the activity seemed appropriate to me for the beginning of the year and introducing each student to their friends and also helping the students learn a little bit more about their teacher. Change slide, please. The brand new flag lesson plans incorporate literacy, visualization, art, and a homeschool connection. A lesson summary and teacher prep is always preceding the learning goals. The lesson plans for every lesson include lesson learning goal number one, focusing on learning or beginning to learn how to use informational nonfiction text, both in reading and writing. This Molly of Denali lesson also has learning goal number 13, and that focuses on captions. There are 15 different learning goals, which are utilized in a variety of the episodes. Change slide, please. The procedure will include new, thank you. The procedure will include an introductory activity for before viewing the Molly of Denali episode, you don't have to do a lot of the work in terms of figuring out what new vocabulary might be presented, what Alaskan words might be in there with a definition and correct pronunciation. It's all there in the before viewing part for you. Alaskan native words are integrated into the program and there, as you saw in the singing with grandpa's drum, with the drum, they are um, a wonderful part of helping people understand and appreciate the indigenous cultures. Change slides. Each study guide also reminds us of the importance of transferring the release of responsibility of the content learning from the teacher to the student. I love this part of the lesson plans. This is best practice for everything we do, but it's hard to keep that in our mind as we are trying to create lesson plans. And this reminds us that just presenting the content is not sufficient for teaching. We need to be sure that children are able to internalize and then apply that content in different settings. And so every single lesson does all this work for us and gives us step one, two, three, four, and five in every single plan. The five steps are explicit instruction, modeling, collaborative use, guided use, and finally independent use. Next slide. Following the before viewing information, you'll find the while viewing and after viewing component. Again, how many times are we given this much information so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel? These can be tailored for individual learning strengths. You will have questions that are higher level questions. You'll have questions that are recall questions so that all children can be successful. It can be done as a whole group. It can be done as a small group where you might assign a question for children to discuss amongst themselves and then share them back with the group. It can be done as an independent writing activity. And some of these questions might be interesting to send home and have the children discuss with their families as another homeschool connection. After the follow-up, the plans are already developed to help the educator move through those five levels of release. And you can see, and I know the print is small, but it has the, uh, the step one with the explicit instructions and it goes all the way to step five with the independent use. Please change slides. Finally, there will be a culminating activity or several culminating activities. For Molly of Denali, there are three different culminating activities. You can choose one or more, you can combine them, you can modify them. As educators, I'm sure you have lots of ideas about how you might utilize these. My thought was it was a wonder what, wonderful way to introduce your students to each other by them sharing what was important to them about themselves. This is how I would incorporate it. 
I think that each child will think of what they feel is most important about themselves. They might do that in school in an activity. They might do that at home. You can send this as a homeschool connection. Next slide, please. There's a template for this. Again, it's all right there. It has a box for the flag and it has three boxes next to it. You might be wondering why they're there. That's because this entry focuses on it lesson goal number 13, which is captions. So the children will be creating a flag, but they'll also be creating captions. If you wanted to do a homeschool connection, you could send this template home and with their families, they could come up with three things that they think are important about them. It might be a pet, it might be a special place they've traveled, it might be other family members. That caption can be a single word. It can be a small, short sentence. If you don't wanna send home this template, you could send home an index card with one, two, three on it, and together the family could write down what those captions would be. Or if you wanna make kids really happy, you can send home three sticky notes. And on each of the sticky notes can be one of the things that they want to share with their class. Remember the piece of paper I asked you to have. I'm gonna ask you now to get that piece of paper. And before you do anything, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and I'll give you a few seconds to visualize what you think is most important about you that you want to share with your students. On your piece of paper, all you need to do is draw a large rectangle, put three little rectangles next to it. And in those rectangles, please put a caption in each of them. It can be one sentence, it can be one word, something that you think is important for your children to know about you. You can complete your flag ahead of time to present and show to your children, or you can do it while they're doing theirs as modeling. For art activities, for materials, you could have crayons, markers, pencils, crepas, pastels. Depending on your class, you might decide to have magazines with scissors to cut and paste. You might have sequins. Of course, I'm going to the first grade kindergarten, love. Um, you could have all kinds of things. After the children's flags are completed, the children can present them to their friends and tell what makes them special. You can tape them to a pencil, tape them to a ruler. You can have a flag parade around the classroom. You could invite other classes to come in for the flag parade. Who knows? Maybe it could be a whole school activity and there could be an assembly where children get to learn more about each other. And this is just one Molly of Denali episode. Every one of them has incredible activities and learning opportunities for children. And they're all based on literacy and learning more about indigenous cultures and science and social studies. In closing, I hope you enjoy Molly of Denali as much as I do and find incorporating these PBS episodes and lesson plans into your curriculum easy, fun, and useful. I will be joining others on October 13th for the follow-up. If there are any questions that I haven't answered or questions that you think of later, jot them down, send them to Carolyn, and I'll try to answer them again. I'm grateful for your time and your service and all that you do every day to make the world a better place. Thank you and happy teaching, utilizing Molly of Denali. And with that, I turn you over to Michelle.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Janet. That was wonderful. I now have lots of resources I can bring back to the faculty at my school as well. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Maloney. I am a, a GBH educator ambassador. Um, I am also a focused instructional coach for Worcester Public Schools in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, I work at Worcester Arts Magnet School and I have worked there for the last 11 years. Um, teaching fourth grade until I took this role. Before that, I actually taught preschool for a number of years um, with, through Worcester Child Development Head Start. So um, I am also a mom and I have a 12 year old and a nine year old who both love Molly. Um, and so uh, a while back I was asked to um, kind of contribute to the, the podcast and coming up with some curriculum questions or editing and revising, and I couldn't say no. It was such a great opportunity. Um, part of my job as an instructional coach is really to provide professional development and other supports to the teachers in my school. Um, and part of that is finding great resources like this and modeling how it can be used in a classroom, which is kind of what I'm gonna try to do today. Um, so next slide, please. So all three seasons of the podcast, Molly of Denali, um, are available to listen for free from PBS Kids, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever your uh, classroom likes to listen. Um, and really, I think podcasts are becoming a new wonderful resource that we can use in our classrooms. Cause as we know, especially after a year of remote learning or 18 months of remote learning, um, it is so hard to keep those kids engaged and podcasts is just another fun thing that we can incorporate into our day where we can sort of hide the fact that they're learning. Um, next slide, please. So this is a little trick I learned um, through remote teaching. And I thought we could do this together. So I'm hoping that everyone will participate. I'm going to ask the question, what is your biggest struggle during the school day? I'd like you to type the, your response into the chat, but don't press enter or return until I say to. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do that. So hopefully fingers crossed this works and we have lots of, of great answers. Um, so what is your biggest struggle for those of you that are in the classroom? What is your biggest struggle during the school day? Go ahead and type those answers now. Okay, if you're ready, go ahead and click enter. And let's see. Oh boy. Thank you for writing. I was so scared nobody was going to answer. And that would have been really awkward. Um, oh, yes. So math. Yeah, that's a tough one, too. Um, limited time to cover content, keeping students engaged as the day goes on. Uh, yes, potty time, bathrooming is always a struggle. Um, limited time to cover content transitions. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Um, finding the time to do everything. Focus keeping them listening and not chatting to neighbors. I mean, there are so many struggles that we as teachers see every day. And I, after, after you know, coming off of the last 18 months, it, however long it's been, it, the struggles have increased and they've changed and they've gotten worse. And we all know that. Um, and I find this as a nice, way of making our lives a little bit easier and overcoming some of those battles. So two things that, or a few things that really stuck out to me in the chat was what I also struggled with in the classroom. Time, engagement, and another thing was just, you know, struggling readers, kids struggling with the content, whatever the content is. And a lot of times engagement goes hand in hand with that. Um, next slide, please. So when we think about a podcast, a lot of times it's hard to think about how you might use that in your classroom. It's great when you're given all these resources, but sometimes we're given so many resources and guess what? 
our day doesn't get any longer, right? We still have the same amount of hours in the day to get everything done. So I was trying to think about how I would use it. And some of the things that, the ways that I would do is I would use it as a center. I would have it set up in my classroom almost as a listening center. And of course there would be an exit slip, which I will get to in a little bit. Um, when we talk about passive learning versus active learning, I find listening to podcasts and then doing an activity more of an active learning. So passive learning, you're being talked to, you're being given the information. With something like this, you can really be doing it more independently. You can be re-listening to find that evidence to support your answer. Um, yeah, finding the time to fit it in, absolutely. So I think creating this as a center is going to give you more time. I was envisioning seeing this in my classroom, kids all on the computers, listening to Molly of Denali, answering those questions, going back and re-listening to find the evidence while I was pulling a group for RTI, working, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with a student, conferencing with students, trying to fit in all those other things. Um, you know, independent reading. So independent reading we know is super important, right? IDR, drop everything and read, whatever your school uses, we know it's important. What we also know is that it's really hard to make sure that all of your students are engaged during independent reading. And you're always gonna have that group of kids that isn't really focused, isn't really reading. You know, you look out and the book's upside down type of thing. Wouldn't it be great to take those kids and hook them on a podcast, get them listening to Molly, get them engaged. They're still using their comprehension skills just because they're not reading it out of a book. They're listening to it. They're using those comprehension skills. They're practicing and they're building a love of literacy and language that we so need to do um, at in the elementary years. Um, we can, of course, use it for whole group listening, having a great discussion after. We can use it for shared reading um, lessons and shared writing lessons. I always have some kind of a writing assignment with anything like this um, because they go hand in hand, reading and writing. Um, Carolyn, if you could do me a favor and just click on the link. I actually had put it into the, um, where it says podcast, season two, episode one, all aboard. Um, oh, okay. Hmm. If you click on that, there should be a link. There we go. Okay. So once, this is what it looks like, Molly of Denali, the podcast. This is what your kids will see on their Chromebooks, on their computers, on their iPads. And what's great is you can play the podcast, which we're, for the sake of time, we're not going to do right now. But after the, they play the podcast, there are different activities they can do. Could you please click on games? Thank you. There are all of these wonderful games that the kids can explore based on Molly of Denali. Um, so this might be a great reward for those kids that need that motivation. Um, this might be um, so, you know, a great formative assessment. Um, you can use this in so many different ways, um, but they're engaging, they're fun. Um, and again, it's that active learning. Um, Carolyn, if you could go back. Yep, just click on that Molly of Denali. And then if you could click where it says activities. Okay. So there are also great printables that you can click on and different activities that you can do. Again, I, as a teacher for so many years in different age groups um, would take these and I would build upon them. So I would take that coloring sheet and I would add a writing prompt to it. Um, I would take the, you know, the different, the matching game, and I would add a writing prompt or some comprehension questions to it just to build upon that. And then you've got more of that literacy center. So the kids are listening to the podcast, but then they're following it up with something in writing. Um, if you could go back to the slides.
Thank you. And just go to the next slide. Okay, so I mentioned this briefly. In my new position, I am definitely using data to drive my instruction as I did as a teacher, just in a different way. And as teachers, we know it is so important to check in with your students and make sure that they're understanding the content. And so I really took some time to think, okay, this is great, but how can I follow up with my students? So there's the games, there's the activity sheets, there's the coloring sheets with the writing prompts, and then there's discussion and comprehension questions. This is the piece that I helped out with. Um, there are tons of comprehension questions for each se series, for each season um, on the parent site, the PBS Learning Media. There you could also make up your own. And having those available, doing those with the kids, having them do some of their own, making sure that you're getting a nice balance of where they're just recalling details from this text, but then also having some higher level thinking questions or some depth of knowledge questions to make sure that you're building on their language and getting them talking. I know one of the biggest struggles right now um, in our school is language. And it's not just that we have a large ELL population, it's that kids have not been talking because we've been remote. And so getting them discussing things in an academic way, but also using vocabulary is so important. And as we know with all children, they have to be engaged, they have to be excited about something to really be invested in it. So what better way than listening to Molly? Um, thank you. I will be here um, October 13th, I believe, for that follow-up. If anybody has any questions or wants to brainstorm some more ways that you might be able to use this great resource in your classroom. And I will now hand it over to Carolyn. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Michelle. Um, I think I've got the best job in the world. Look at these teachers I get to work with and hear about all of their stories. It's fabulous. Um, I'm not able to view the chat, uh, but I wanted to give Angelica, who's been managing the chat, a chance to call out anything that she has seen that we should um, handle verbally, if there are any questions that we can uh, pause and reflect on or we can move on. Angelica, anything that we should address now? No, I think we're all set. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so as fabulous as Molly Denali is, we don't want you to leave thinking that PBS Learning Media um, only has Molly Denali. So I had mentioned at the outset that the collection, uh, which is a resource type on PBS Learning Media, Media, and you can search by collection. You can filter your search so that you pull up collections. And I think that's a great way to get started with the site. Uh, there are hundreds of collections. And uh, these are just a few examples that are appropriate for your grade band. Uh, Don Quixote is new and a couple on um, social emotional learning. Pinkalicious is a fabulous um, arts and creativity show with lots of resources and lesson plans. And uh, Fairy Tales Old and New is one that I just recently discovered myself. I thought I would include that. Peg Plus Cat is uh, for um, early math. Curious George has a STEM collection. Everybody loves Curious George. And Bringing the Universe to America's Classrooms is an um, unusual collection. It's a collaboration between NASA and GBH, whereby we were funded to produce resources for Earth and space science across K-12. So in the K-2 grade band, um, there are resources on weather, and climate, the solar system, et cetera. And they are fabulous resources. We are drawing on NASA imaging, imaging and NASA data. And we've created these very rich, gorgeous resources. Um, and uh, so I encourage you to check out that collection too. And Arthur, 
Um, there are many uh, resources about Arthur, Arthur Civics, Arthur Social Emotional Learning. There's a, a video about um, masking uh, during COVID. We ran a webinar similar to this one on Arthur in the summer. And we have a recording of that that I'm sure Angelica will post in the chat too. I forgot to mention at the outset that we have a resource document where we've listed all of the URLs of things that we've talked about this evening. Uh, we also share the slides and those links I'm sure Angelica has posted. And that will also be in the follow-up email you get tomorrow. All right, we, um, our research department at GBH uh, creates surveys for all of our webinars. Uh, they're anonymous unless you choose to identify yourself. And we ask that you please take the post webinar survey and help us improve our work. At the end of the survey, you have an opportunity to download a certificate of attendance if you would like it. And the survey will stay open for about a week. We find that most people, um, do it right away or the day after. And we've been mentioning this follow-up peer exchange on October 13th. Again, the presenters from this evening will be online to have an open discussion. We'll have some kickoff questions, um, but we encourage you to explore resources that you've seen tonight, give some thought to it, and come back. We are only inviting people to this peer exchange who attended the live stream tonight or who watched the recording. So this is not a widely public um, event. We're very active on social media. We encourage you to follow us. And I wanna thank our presenters, um, Emily and Lori from the Vermont Agency of Education, uh, it's been great working with you, Heather from Vermont PBS, uh, Janet and Michelle, two fabulous teachers, and Angelica in the chat. And thank you to all of you for all that you do and for being with us this evening. Um, I will keep the chat open for a couple of more minutes. And if any of the presenters, um, we are just a couple of minutes before the hour. If any of the presenters want to come back on and uh, mention something they forgot or reiterate, you're welcome to do so. Okay, everybody, have a great rest of the evening. Thanks again and hope to see you on a future webinar or be in touch. Thank you. Good night.